everyone, Jade's Mansell here bringing you yet another video. Oh my God, you guys. So I was on Amazon, right? And I was just scrolling through recommended wigs. I just bought the Billie Eilish wig. So a lot of costume wigs are being recommended to me right now. And I stumbled across this. It is an officially licensed Marilyn Monroe wig. And you can tell it is because it's actually got the Marilyn Monroe signature on the back, marilynmonroe.com. It is from whatever publishing company controls her estate at this point. It's the official. Marilyn Monroe costume wig. So I'm going to take her out and examine her a little bit. Just... Okay. Not much in the ways of packaging. It's a plastic bubble. Okay. Okay. Wow. All right. It looks like Marilyn to me. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Let's look at the wig. Let's look at the wig. Let's look at the wig. Before I get into this, I should tell you a little bit about what inspired me to wrap this wig. Now, when I was looking at the reviews for this wig, I was taking it back it gave me a giggle the very first review on here with the most votes is marilyn would roll over in her grave is the title of it <laughs> basically saying the wig does not look like the photo and the wig is not good so it's got very very low ratings on amazon but you know me i look at a wig as a challenge and that's what we're gonna do today this is how it looks it's definitely a costume wig like what i found weird about it was like when i was examining it there's actually permatease in it. So like for a costume wig, they actually put a little bit of effort into this and they managed to get some kind of a barrel curl, which I'm sure will probably tease away the second I put any kind of back combing into it. So we'll see. Yeah, that is definitely her. California costumes. I never heard of that one, but this is interesting. Okay, well, let's see how this wig looks on my head. I'll be right back. <laughs> and we are back. I mean, <laughs> I don't know about you, but I think I'm Marilyn. <laughs> Marilyn, Marilyn this is supposed to be like Marilyn Munster maybe. Marilyn the singer, sure, but definitely not Marilyn Monroe. Certainly not Marilyn Monroe. Girl, what is this flock of seagulls bang in the front? Oh my God. I feel like Susan Powder in this wig, like a very glamorous Susan Powder. Like she's guesting on Dynasty. Oh, stop the madness. Oh, I feel so dumb and blonde, yes. All right, well, I'm gonna get this off my head because this bang is like sticking to my lip gloss right now. So I'll be right back, I'll be right back. <laughs> all right, we are back. The wig is all on the head and I pinned it down because I'm gonna root a hairline on this because there is not a hairline to speak of here. For it to be a finger wave style that has to go up in a flip, this is like all, this is showing everything, sis. <laughs> so, so we gotta disguise that a little bit. I'm gonna root this out and since there's already a bit of permatease in there, it's actually gonna help me out really a lot, honestly. I'm grateful for that. Like again, it's so weird they permatease a costume wig like this. Cause like the quality is really, really cheap. It's full on like costume plastic hair. Now, most of my video is gonna be a little bit of just styling because the wig's already kind of permed and pressed into like a usable hairstyle. I think it just needs a little bit of like doctoring here and there. I feel pretty confident about this. Like I'm looking at it and it's like a hairstyle I'm used to working with, at least a curl pattern I'm used to. So I have good feelings about this. I'm gonna put the good juju out there right now that this is gonna be a really, really good idea. And this is gonna come out great. And you're gonna look at this and say, oh my God, James Mansfield is Marilyn Monroe. Like call it a curse or just call her blessed. All right, I got a good start in this rooted hairline going. I'm gonna do the rest off camera and I'll be right back. <laughs> All right, I am back. Now I have the hairline all created now, or at least as much as I could. Now what I'm gonna try and do in this video is, I'm gonna try and create a glamorous, better version of what's on the picture here because there's not a whole lot you can do with a wig this length, except try and make the most of it, honestly. <laughs> oh, all right, now I have the hairline done. Let's start trying to style her. You just turn her, oh boy. Okay, I go through the brush and just start trying to pull up some of the teasing here just so I have more hair to work with. It's kind of like matted down to the head at this point. Oh yeah, I'll try and break this hair up just so I can see what can be done with it and how big we can get it. Cause this is, that's all you're gonna get. <laughs> you're just gonna have to make that work. This length up top though, I'm excited about. We could probably do something with this. So let's just break up that permatease. Cause I have a feeling she sat around on a shelf for a long time. <laughs> just break up this teasing here at the top. Okay, yeah, this definitely sat on a shelf for a number of years. It is matted down to the head. Good Lord. Well, okay, now we have some hair we can work with. Okay, that's a little better. I can actually see the direction where this wants to go. All right, let us begin. 
Now, Marilyn Monroe. I have to say, and I know I say this a lot of the times, when I was younger, I was really, really into her. Like, loved her, thought she was amazing. As I get older, I have to say, like, she doesn't fascinate me as much as other, like, bombshells did. Like, around the time I got to, like, my 20s, I started to mature into, like, different kind of, like, old Hollywood actresses, like, you know, Betty Davis, Dorothy Dandridge, you know, just going through, like, the spectrum of, like, much broader than what's already out there, because Marilyn was, like, so overexposed. And a lot of the stuff they, like, show of her isn't even her best work, to be quite honest with you. She's been kind of overexposed to the point where, like, she's sort of a brand now. She is a brand, to be quite honest with you. Her likeness is owned by, like, this big corporation that specializes in just buying dead celebrities, like, you know, licenses. That's all they do. Like, they bought Elvis, James Dean, Audrey Hepburn, Marilyn Monroe. They have Jane Mansfield, Betty Page. Like, every dead celebrity from that era is basically owned by this company, and they just kind of sit on it and collect. That's all they do. And Marilyn and James Dean and Elvis are the only ones that really get merchandised because they still sell to this day. Like Marilyn, you can, basically she's on everything from, you know, purses to douches. I'm just teasing this out to get some volume and get sort of a bubble going. Because the way that she looked on the package, it's sort of like the JFK hair. Like the hair she wore when she sang Happy Birthday. Although the dress is not the same dress she wore. Like this is the publicity photo dress. So yeah. Which actually, Jane Mansfield wore that gold dress, like the plunging one. Like, Fox is really cheap. They always had costumes they would just loan out to other actresses. If, like, your body was similar, they put you in it. If the set was needed, they just redress it and repaint it. <laughs> like, if you look at those old Fox movies, you could see some of the backdrops from, like, anti mame and stuff in different films. They just repainted them. They were cheap like that. They didn't care. They reused costumes. They reused wigs. And by the time they were going out of business, and they're selling everything off. Like a lot of that stuff just ended up in a landfill in LA. Like it was basically paved over and created into a freeway. Like the original Judy Garland slippers from The Wizard of Oz, that's in the freeway now. <laughs> just buried in pavement. Such a sad fact. Like Debbie Reynolds, you know, bless her heart and her soul. She bought all that old stuff and eventually had to sell it all back. But still, she had it for a long, long, long time and had a Hollywood museum because they weren't thinking of preserving any of that stuff like props and stuff, it was all just garbage. And like I said, Fox especially was so cheap, they just reused everything. And it was no good anymore, they threw it away. Kind of like they're actresses. <laughs> I kid, I kid, I kid. No, I kid, I kid, but I have to say like, one of the most fascinating things about Marilyn Monroe, which I feel like has been kind of beaten to death, but I'll go into it anyway, is the fact that like, she was a lot more than just the image. Like, I feel like there was somebody there that desperately wanted to be taken seriously. Like, all she ever wanted to do was be taken seriously as an actress and as a thought, you know, as like a thinking person, honestly. Be a human being. She just had the misfortune of becoming really, really, really famous at a very young age and not really being capable enough to, you know, pick the right people in her life and to make the best choices. Oh, that's looking gorgeous. It's like Carol Channing right now. Oh my God. Like Marilyn Monroe and Something's Got to Give. She had that like shaggy hair. Yes. Yeah, like her story is really, really tragic. I feel like that's probably why I don't really like obsess about her as much because it's like, it kind of depresses you, honestly. Like, I always was more drawn to like Jane Mansfield or Mimi Van Doren, like the actresses that had a bit more fun. Like Marilyn Monroe, like you can't get past all the really depressing stuff. Although I will say, when Marilyn died, that was the end of that dumb blonde trope. Like the whole appeal of like the sex bomb, platinum blonde, dumb blonde actress. That gone away the second Marilyn Monroe was gone. There's a really sad passage in one of Mamie Van Doren's book, I believe it was Playing the Field, where she talked about how she bumped into Jane Mansfield in like the mid 60s. It was like a few years after Marilyn had passed and she basically said to her very morbidly, like, you know, Mamie, our careers are over. And to be quite honest with you, it's like kind of a really sad realization of fate. Like it was really kind of the way it was. The second she was gone, like that whole image fell out of favor and the style completely changed. It was a cultural reset. People didn't want to see like blondes anymore. They wanted, you know, something different for the 60s. And it would have been interesting to see what Marilyn Monroe's image would have like transitioned into. The last movie she was working on that she got fired from was Something's Got to Give, which was eventually finished with a different actress and retitled something else. We like Doris Day played the part. I can't remember what it's called. It was like her and Rock Hudson redid it, but it was supposed to be Marilyn Monroe and I believe Frank Sinatra. And it was supposed to be like a big deal because Marilyn Monroe 
it sounds so bad saying it in 2020, but like one of the big draws for that movie was the fact that she was gonna do a nude scene. She was gonna be the first Hollywood actress to appear nude in a film. And that was like one of the big kind of key drawing points. Like it's so gross to talk about nowadays, but like that's one of the things like the press ate up. And I guess like from what they say, it was supposed to be like a breakthrough role for her and she showed so much promise in it. I watched it and from what I saw, like she's all right. It's kind of boring and the plot's not great. But I mean, for that time, it probably would have been a huge hit for her because she desperately needed to come back. Because at that point she had been gone away for a long time and she had some bad press behind her. She had like Judy Garland heat. God, I know so much about Marilyn Monroe. It's that problem of like watching all those documentaries when I was a teenager. Like I can't remember, you know, a squirt of anything. I don't remember how to get the pie in math, but I know everything there is to know about Marilyn Monroe and her career. <laughs> Ugh. It's never gonna come in handy until now when I have to style a wig based on her. All right, well, I'm gonna tease this out a bit more. I'll be right back, okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I am back. Now, it is time to start our style and brush out. Now, it is all teased out. I have to say, like, look at that. I got a good amount of volume from this wig. I have to say, like, I'm not mad at that. The hair quality could be better, but you know what? I can make this work. I feel confident I can get a couple different hairstyles out of this if I really wanted to. But we're gonna try and do a Marilyn today. So what I'm going for is sort of like a Marilyn Monroe on like the cover of Playboy. Yes, yes, yes. That iconic Marilyn hairstyle. So what I'm gonna do here is it's a very, very deep part. So I'm gonna separate some hair here. And it's a deep side part. So I'm gonna take that and just angle my brush up, brush forward and let the tails fly out like that. Yeah, definitely, this hair was definitely designed to become this hairstyle, but, you know, being that it was inside that bag for so long, and <laughs> I'm sure the quality probably varies depending on which unit you're getting. <laughs> so we're gonna try our best to try and make something similar to that. We'll see. So far, this side's looking great. I'm not sure how this is gonna turn out, but we'll see. <laughs> Ugh. Now back to Marilyn. Now. One of the things I find very fascinating about her is like one of her biggest gripes in life was like she wanted to be taken seriously so badly and she didn't want to be seen as like just a sex symbol, you know? Which is kind of ironic considering like there's like statues of Marilyn Monroe that tour. Like I remember years ago it came to Chicago and it was like a landmark thing for a while there where you can go and see the big Marilyn Monroe statue and it'd just be like all these guys just posing underneath Marilyn Monroe's statue just upskirting her the entire time. It happened like a hundred times a day. And you just look at that and you think like, wow, Marilyn would have absolutely hated that. Yeah, she would have hated that. This is exactly what she didn't want. She didn't want to just be seen as that. And she wanted people just to like, you know, make an item out of her body like that. So yeah, it's like really sad to think about like, ugh, just the loss of control of her own image that she has nowadays. Like she's, even in death, she doesn't rest. Because like I said, like that's part of being an adult when you hear learn about Marilyn Monroe that like kind of depresses you after a while. It's like, oh, sh like that sucks. At least we still have the movies. I haven't talked about my favorite Marilyn movie yet. I feel like my favorite one is, I like her obscure stuff. I love the stuff she did where it was her being more artsy. Like if you ever want to see something that's like out of character for Marilyn Monroe, like her most out of pocket movie she ever did is called Don't Bother to Knock. I won't spoil it for you, but I'll give you a little synopsis of it. Like she plays an insane babysitter. So yeah, it was definitely her stretching her artistic chops. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah, other than that, not a whole lot of her movies really speak to me. She got a lot of really good theater roles that were made into films that she didn't bring a whole lot to. Like she did Bus Stop. Not the best. <laughs> Gentlemen prefer blondes. You know, it's not, she ain't no Carol Channing, I'll say that. But you know what? She did her best. Yeah, looking at that, like she is forming. Like we're getting a Marilyn look here. Like considering how cheap the costume hair is, like she is definitely doing what I tell it to. So I'm not mad at that. Like that's looking a little Marilyn. Here we go. Pretty. Now I do these hairstyles quite a bit. So like it's like second nature to me. It's gonna be a little slower for you when you try and do it if you're like new to it because it's a lot of like patience and just structuring it. I can do this hairstyle in my sleep to be quite honest with you. I've done it so often. Ugh, now I got the depressing subject of Marilyn Monroe's career. I have actually been watching a lot of television lately. Like I just watched that like documentary on Netflix about the Night Stalker and girl, let me just say my biggest takeaway about that is like after watching it and seeing the way he's behaving in court and everything, I was like, wow, he was such a tool. Oh my God. <laughs> and then I like people thought he was attractive. Ew. 
gross. No, ma'am. Couldn't be me. I love myself too much. Oh my God, this other one. I am in love with this other new series that's out. It's called Bling Empire. It's called The Bling Empire. Yes, yes, yes. And I'm watching this and like, I live for fake rich people drama. It's my favorite thing in the world. Like I grew up watching Dynasty. So like I'm used to like it getting really, really over the top, but like it's even more so like just trying to invent problems is my favorite thing. Like you can see the wheels turning in their eyes and everything, like just trying to make something happen. So it's some drama for the channel, for the cameras. Like one of them was literally a dinner party. And the biggest the bit of drama that happened was that they changed a girl's seating at the table. <laughs> Play setting was the cause of high drama. <laughs> I'm like, girl, I grew up watching Dynasty, okay? Like, like they really made some money moves there. It's just like buy her oil rig and force her out of her own home, holding the deed. Then come talk to me about high drama and rich people. <laughs> Tell her her champagne is burned. <sighs> it's like she changed the girl's seating at the table and she looked at the camera like she was gonna have a heart attack. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. She's looking like Marilyn. All right. Like I said, I do this really, really fast. <laughs> like with the back, it's literally what I do a lot where I just fill in the gaps with the curls and let that do all the work and just try and smooth it out at the top so that it looks intentional. And I think she's done. Like it's Marilyn. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna cut this hairline and I'm gonna try it on. I'll be right back with the final result. <laughs> Welcome back. This is the final result. Ooh. I'm Marilyn. Ooh. I have to say, I actually turned this out. What, considering ugh, this is what it was supposed to be and I turned it into this, I feel like I have the magic touch, sis. I am Marilyn Monroe. Try and tell me otherwise. Okay, yes, Marilyn embodied. I, I bodied Marilyn right now. <laughs> I sound so young and hip bodied. Oh my goodness, this wig is fabulous, but it is just missing one more thing. The James Mansfield Magical Wig Spray from Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab. Let's just give this wig a spritz. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh. <laughs> now my hair smells just like cream soda. Ooh. Available at BlackPhoenixAlchemyLab.com. And grooming could be an absolute drag. Thankfully, I have Manscaped. Use my code JAMES20 or Mansfield for 20% off your purchase plus free shipping. It's for your no-no bits. I, can't, I hate it. I hate it so much. Oh my God. Now this wig, the, the hair quality is not great. I will tell you that right now. Like if I were to buy this knowing nothing about wigs and I got it, I'd full on be angry too. <laughs> Marilyn would roll in her grave if this is what represented her before it was styled. Yes, yes, yes. But I feel like it actually turns out into the hairstyle. Like there is a good roller pattern in there, but you gotta do a lot of work to make her wearable. And even after this, I had to do a lot of work to the hairline to make sure she actually covered something. Now I'm filming this video immediately after I released the Marge Simpson video. So I don't have anything for, as far as PayPal monies or Venmos go. Yeah, I read all those in the last one. So <laughs> catch you in the next one if you end up sending something to me, you know, later on. Anyways. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, bye. Ooh. Hit the outro. <laughs> Click here and see me recreate a Marge Simpson wig. Or it's me recreate Lady Gaga's fame monster hair. Come on, click it. You know you want to. If you don't click it, a rich one will flaunt her status at you for the rest of your life. So click it. <laughs>